What if humanity's second chance was hiding right next door, just four light years away, orbiting the star Proxima Centauri lies Proxima b, a world once hailed as Earth's twin, our cosmic backup plan? But don't get fooled by the promise, the truth is darker. Between us and that world stand walls of physics, danger, and distance that no ship can break. Tonight, we reveal why Proxima b will never be ours. When Proxima b was announced in 2016, the world erupted. At last, an exoplanet right next door, circling the dim red star Proxima Centauri, just 4.24 light years away. Headlines screamed second Earth found, and scientists described it as lying in the habitable zone where water could exist. Its year is just 11 Earth days, its size slightly larger than ours. On paper, it looked like a cosmic mirror of Earth, probably a potential paradise waiting for us. But science is rarely that simple. Proxima b orbits so close to its star that it might be tidally locked, with one side scorched in eternal daylight and the other frozen in endless night. If water exists, it might be trapped at the razor-thin line between day and night. Even so, the dream was irresistible. Could this be humanity's escape plan, a new Eden across the void? But before we ask what it's like there, we need to face the biggest obstacle, simply getting there. Four light years, it doesn't sound like much. On a cosmic map, Proxima b really is close, but distance, it plays tricks on us. Light itself, the fastest thing in existence, takes over four years to cross that gap. For us, it might as well be eternity. Voyager 1, humanity's most distant spacecraft, has been racing through space since 1977. After nearly 50 years, it's only reached about 0.05% of the distance to Proxima b. At its current speed, it would take 70,000 years to get there. Think about that. 70,000 years ago, our ancestors were carving stone tools and dodging saber-toothed cats. By the time Voyager reached Proxima b, humanity as we know it might not even exist anymore. And even our modern rockets, NASA's SLS or SpaceX's Starship, barely scratch the surface of that timescale. A trip would still take tens of thousands of years. Distance isn't just about numbers, it's about scale that crushes the imagination. So, what speed would we actually need to turn this impossible voyage into something a human could survive? To get there in, let's say, the next 50 years, we'd need to travel at 10% the speed of light, 30,000 kilometers per second. At that pace, you could fly from New York to Tokyo in less than a second. But there is this problem that we may face. Accelerating a craft at that speed requires energy on a godlike scale. To push a modest one-ton ship to 10% light speed would consume more energy than all of humanity produces in an entire year. And that's just for acceleration. To stop at Proxima b, you'd need just as much energy again. The math doesn't just strain possibility, it breaks it. We're talking about engineering challenges so extreme, they make the moon landing look like a weekend road trip. And yet, speed is only half the nightmare, because once you're racing through the void, the universe itself turns against you. Interstellar space isn't empty. It's filled with dust, gas, and cosmic rays. At near light speeds, even the tiniest particle becomes catastrophic. A grain of sand would strike with the energy of an exploding bomb. Millions of such impacts could tear a ship apart long before it ever reached its destination. Then there's the invisible killer, radiation. Outside our solar system, cosmic rays and high-energy particles flood space like a storm of invisible bullets. On Earth, we're shielded by our atmosphere and magnetic field. In deep space, at near light speed, astronauts would be roasted alive by radiation. The solution seems obvious, thick shielding. But here's the paradox, every layer of protection makes the ship heavier. And the heavier it is, the harder it is to accelerate to those impossible speeds. Protection makes the journey impossible, and without protection, the journey kills you. A classic no-win scenario. Which brings us to the next brutal question, what kind of engine could ever take us there? Over the years, scientists have sketched out some of the boldest propulsion ideas imaginable, and on paper, they sound like magic. 
Take fusion engines, for instance. They would run on the same reaction that powers the sun, burning hotter and longer than anything we could dream of. In theory, they could fling us across light years with incredible efficiency. The problem, though, is that after decades of research, we still haven't managed to build a working fusion reactor here on Earth, let alone one that could survive in deep space. Then there's antimatter. A single gram of it could release as much energy as a nuclear bomb, making it the most powerful fuel in the universe. But we can barely produce a few atoms of antimatter in labs, and storing it safely is a nightmare. One mistake, one breach in containment, and the ship itself would be obliterated in a flash. And finally, there's the idea of light sails, massive, ultra-thin sheets pushed forward by giant lasers back on Earth. The Breakthrough Starshot project dreams of sending tiny probes this way, racing through space at nearly 20% the speed of light. But those probes would be no bigger than a postage stamp, far too fragile to carry people, and vulnerable to every stray particle they slammed into along the way. All of these concepts sound breathtaking. They make us imagine starships leaping between the stars, but when you look closely, each one falls apart under the weight of reality. For now, they remain dreams promises of a future we can't yet touch. And even if we somehow cracked one of these propulsion miracles, there's a darker truth waiting at the finish line. Proxima B itself might not be the welcoming world we hope for. Habitable Zone It sounds like a promise, but it isn't. Proxima Centauri is a red dwarf star. Smaller, cooler, but far more violent than our sun. It unleashes flares hundreds of times more powerful than solar storms on Earth. These flares can strip away atmospheres, bombard planets with radiation, and sterilize surfaces. If Proxima b once had oceans and breathable air, they may have long since been destroyed. What's left could be barren, irradiated rock. And if an atmosphere survives, it might not be friendly. It could be choking with carbon dioxide, thick enough to crush lungs, or laced with deadly chemicals. The planet's stronger gravity would make every step heavier, every movement exhausting. Instead of paradise, explorers might find a nightmare world, dark, hostile, and impossible to settle. And if that weren't discouraging enough, time itself conspires against us. Even unmanned probes face the crushing reality of time. Breakthrough Starshot's proposed laser sails could hit 20% light speed, an astonishing feat. Yet, it would still take 20 years to arrive at Proxima b. Then, because signals travel at light speed, we'd wait another four years just to receive data. That's nearly a quarter century for a few pictures and measurements. Now, imagine sending humans. The journey would stretch across generations, entire families would be born, live, and die inside the ship before it ever reached its target. Interstellar travel isn't exploration. It's a migration with no guarantee of survival at the end. Time isn't just an obstacle, it's a wall. So why, knowing all this, do scientists remain obsessed with Proxima b? Because Proxima b is more than a destination, it's a question. Red dwarfs are the most common stars in our galaxy. If life can survive their flares, tidal locking, and hostile conditions, then the universe could be teeming with living worlds. Even if Proxima b is hostile, it teaches us what planets can endure. It shows us where to look, what to expect, and how life might adapt under alien suns. Proxima b may never be humanity's second home, but it could hold the key to proving we're not alone. It's a cosmic riddle, and riddles drive science forward. But in chasing those answers, we also confront the deepest truth of all, the scale of the universe itself. You might not know this, but the real reason that it's impossible, space isn't big. It's incomprehensibly big. Proxima b is our nearest star system, yet the gulf feels infinite. Our rockets are insects crawling across a continent. This is the cosmic prisons we live in. We are trapped inside our solar system, staring out at horizons we cannot cross. The bars aren't made of steel, they're made of distance, time, and the limits of our technology. Proxima b isn't just a planet, it's a mirror showing us how small we are, how fragile our ambitions look against the void. And yet, the human story has always been about breaking limits. Could the future rewrite the impossible? History whispers, yes, flight was once impossible, space travel, a fantasy, the moon, unreachable, 
Yet, we conquered them all. Fusion may still be mastered. Antimatter could one day be harvested from the cosmos. Technologies beyond our imagination may lie ahead, just waiting for discovery. If that happens, Proxima B could shift from untouchable dream to reachable frontier. But until then, it remains out of reach. A reminder of how vast the cosmos is and how far we still have to go. The truth is sobering, but also inspiring. Proxima B dares us to dream bigger, because maybe its greatest purpose isn't to host us, but to challenge us. Proxima B will always haunt the night sky, glowing like a promise we can't keep. A planet so close, yet impossibly far. We may never set foot there, but perhaps that's the point. Perhaps it exists to remind us that the universe is both hostile and breathtaking, brutal and beautiful. In the end, Proxima B isn't our next home. It's a dare, a cosmic whisper saying go further, dream harder, reach for the impossible. And if that journey fired up your imagination, don't forget to like this video, hit subscribe and turn on the bell, because the next frontier might just be stranger than anything we've imagined.